Praise God. Amen. Let us give our pastor, Pastor Habiba, a hand clap. She has done a good job. And let us also give a mighty hand clap to our pastor, our senior pastor. Just as Pastor Habiba said, such opportunities are not given in every church. So I just want to thank God for using our senior pastor to train each and every one in this place. They have been grooming us, they have been training us, and when you accept God uses you when you avail yourself with the right grooming God will use you amen amen before we get into the word I would like us to pray Yes, if you feel comfortable. Our dear loving Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to speak to your people, Lord. I don't even know under which anointing I'm standing here. I can't even say that I've been called to be a teacher. But I know that my ministry is what you have assigned me to do each and every day of my life. So, the fact that you have chosen me to speak to your people today, I believe that today you are anointing me with the power to speak unto every man and woman in this place and bring good news to them. King of glory, I pray that you anoint me and I pray for an anointing upon this ministry an anointing in the overflow, an anointing upon each and every person in this place, an anointing of understanding and an anointing of teaching. Open up our, our ears for us to hear what you are telling us. For us to hear what you are telling us. Let the word that is going to be shared fall on fertile soils. Let the word that is going to be heard today make a difference in someone's life from today onwards in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in this place. May you take over. Use me as a vessel for the glory of the Father. Not for my glory, but for the glory of the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that I decrease and may there be more of you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. Amen. You can take your seats. I'm so happy to see you all. I'm so excited to be standing here in front of you. This is a scary place. But I believe that God is with us and God is with me and he is going to communicate to us. So my teaching for today is, uh, is going to be about disobedience. This is something that God has been teaching me about and I don't even know how to begin. Before we get into uh, the scripture, 
Lions. I want us all to understand God speaks. God speaks to us. So when he speaks to us, we need to listen and obey what he is telling us. He is constantly speaking. He is always speaking. It's just that sometimes we are surrounded by a lot of noise and we do not hear. If I start <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Let us go to to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words that I say. Let my teaching fall on you like rain. Let my speech settle like dew. Let my words fall like rain on tender grass, like gentle showers on young plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. How glorious is our God. He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is, he is a faithful God who does no wrong. How just and upright. The main thing I want to pick out of the scripture is the fact that the heavens and the earth hear the word of God. They listen to him. Because it started with listen, O heavens. So they listen. And I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words that I say. This shows us that God speaks. He speaks to the earth. He speaks to the heavens. He speaks to me and you. When he speaks, there is something he wants you to do. Or he is, he is giving you, it's communication. When, when we, our relationship with God is a, a relationship. So when, you're, when you have a relationship with someone, you communicate. So God communicates to us. And the most audible way he communicates with us, in case, in case someone is like, I, I don't hear God speak. I don't know how he speaks. The most audible way is through his word. This the most audible way God speaks to us. When you read the word of God, we need to believe that he is speaking to us because the Bible says that the word is God. So, now that, uh, now that we've understood that God speaks to us, there are times when God speaks to us and we decide not to do what he has told us to do. And that is a very dangerous place for us to be. In our walk with God, we are supposed to always 
always listen to what he is telling us and do that that he is telling us to do without even thinking about why he is telling you to do it. That is why when God called Abraham, he called him Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. And the Lord told him, I want you to sacrifice your son. And he even emphasized and said, your one and only son. Then he emphasized and said, the one that you love. It was a very tough position to be in, but Abraham followed the instructions without even thinking about what would happen. Him sacrificing the son meant him killing the son. But he did not look at the fact that he was killing the son. He was looking at the fact that he was obeying God's instructions. And it's so amazing that when you read that scripture, I'm not going to read it because I have other scriptures that I want us to look at. But it's amazing that when the son asked him that, Father, why we are going to sacrifice, we are going to sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice? I don't see the sacrifice. It's so amazing how Abraham responded. He responded by telling the son that God will provide. In saying that, maybe he did not even realize it that he was actually declaring something at that point. But indeed, God provided, and that provision was not his son, it was a ram. Let us go to that was. Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty. How many of you read scriptures when you come across the part that says, "If you do not do this, then this will happen"? How many of you skip? I am among them. <laughs> so let us go to the Let's start with one from verse one. I'll start with from one to two and then we'll go to the three. Yes, so verse one says if you fully obey Lord, your God, and carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Now, I'm going to skip the blessings that God was talking about, and we go to 15. Now, 15, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7. That's the other part I want to read. <laughs> it says, But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. I'm going to look at one, one of them. So let us go to 20, 28, 20, Deuteronomy 28, 20. It says, the Lord himself, now this is if you do not obey. If you do not obey all, all the commands. This is what can happen to you. The Lord himself will send on new curses, confusion, and frustration in everything you do. Until at, at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. Then, twenty 
28, 28. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. This, this is something that can happen to any of us. But then, if we read the word of God, and, and by his grace, he actually opens our spiritual eyes. We start to see. We start to see. We go through something. We start to see. There are times when God gives us instructions. But when those instructions are hard, when, when, when in our body, in our flesh, you feel like this is too hard. But at that point when he's giving you that instruction, it might look easy. Then after some time, as you're going through maybe a situation, you decide to ignore the command that he gave you. And then you, 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 you can even reach a state where you no longer want to read the scriptures in reference to what you're going through. The truth, the truth that is telling you that don't do this. Now, when you decide to do the opposite of what God has told you to do, you get in a state of confusion. How many of you have got to I have been going through this, and it was because of my disobedience. How many of you have gone through this? You start being confused. Maybe it's just a few of us who have gone through this. But you become anxious. You, you lose direction. And because you, are, you do not want to read his word, actually, even the, the devil can use that time and make you fear to read the word. When you're in that state, you have shifted to the darkness side in that state because you have disobeyed God. And God is a God of principles. He is a God of principles. When he says don't do this, he, he will not again say like, okay, you do it. No, no. So, because you feel like you want to take an easier way around it, you might do something that is contrary to what God told you to do, and then you end up losing sleep, you're anxious, even at work you don't concentrate anymore, because you're in a state of confusion and anxiety. But that is a result of disobedience. Now, let us go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, from verse 18 to 20. I'll read. It says from 18, Come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. If you will only obey me, you will have plenty to eat. But if you turn away and refuse to listen, you will be devoured by the sword of your enemies. I, the Lord, have spoken. God is telling us that if we obey, only obey him, if we only obey him, we will have plenty to eat. If only we obey him. And then he continues to say that, but if you turn away and refuse to listen, you will be devoured by the sword of your enemies. Now, what is the sword? The sword is the word of God. Have you heard of the scripture that says that the word of God tests us? Yes. The word of God itself tests us. There, 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 there are scriptures I read to me once. There is a scripture I read about sin. The trampling. There is that scripture that says that if you continue as sin, then you trample over the blood of Jesus. And you're making, I'm just paraphrasing, and you're making, you're making the cross. I've forgotten how it is. But in other words, we are not supposed to continuously do the same thing because when we keep on doing the same thing and asking for forgiveness and asking for forgiveness, then we make his blood irrelevant. We make his sacrifice irrelevant. When I read that scripture, when I read that scripture, after some time, I started telling myself, oh God, why did you make me see the scripture now? <laughs> why did you make me see the scripture now? I got scared. Because I knew the power that comes with the word of God. I know the power that comes with the word of God. When you hear the word and when you get it, then that same word starts testing you. You're supposed to do what that word is saying. You're supposed to do what that word is saying. So, this is also a word that God is telling us. Do not listen to the words of the world. Then my very own word will devour you. We do not want to be devoured by this. Now I'll give you at the beginning of this year, I was praying to God about, about like my direction. There is this big decision that I wanted to make in my life. But I could not make that decision without asking God, without finding out what his will is. You, you know those places where you're, you're at the crossroads and you, you, your heart wants to do something. You want to do something that is contrary to the word of God. So interestingly, I prayed about it. I don't know. I, I thought the Holy Spirit would tell me something, but it didn't work. <laughs> no, no. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never contradicts himself. If you, if you get a word and you believe it's from the Holy Spirit and it's contrary to what the word of God says, then you need to test that. You need to test it. So I prayed and I even fasted. I even fasted because I wanted to get a very sure answer. And I felt like me fasting and praying will help me get that specific answer that I want, a sure one. So I prayed and fasted. And during that time, I was asking God, what am I supposed to do? Should I move away from this place or should I stay 
at this place? Should I do this or should I not do this? And God gave me an answer that is an answer that is uh, in alignment to his word. He told me not to do anything. And several months after, now when it came to maybe like last month, the thought started crossing my mind again. Like, no, this time let me ignore. Let me ignore what God told me. Let me ignore what he instructed me to do. It's okay. If I, if I do this, I will not be disobeying him. Then I started convincing myself that I wouldn't be disobeying him by doing exactly what he told me not to do. Then I applied for, these things are so connected. So I applied for, then I started being anxious and then I even applied for a visa for going to UK. And because I was in that state of confusion, I even left there my passport. You know, when you apply for a visa, you, when you apply for visas for going to UK, you, you leave your passport unless you pay for staying with your passport. And because I was in that state of confusion and not even knowing what I'm doing and all that, I stupidly left my passport there. Like, I, I did not pay for this other service to keep my passport because I have, like, I have two trips. And this other trip is before the trip to UK. So <laughs> I got back home and then I started looking for my passport. And I asked myself, but where did I leave my passport? I'm supposed to have my passport. Then I remembered I left it in Stockholm. And <laughs> but remember, I'm already living in disobedience, you get. So because I'm following something else, like a different direction, you end up making stupid mistakes. So at some time, I was on a call with someone. I was asking, for, I, was, I was talking to my bank and they, I wanted them to open for me a certain account, a savings account. And then they asked for details on my passport and I look for the passport and I don't see it. Then after the call, I'm like, wait, Stockholm. How? Then, then depression started hitting me. I'm like, okay, I'm supposed, first of all, I have a work trip next week, at the end of next week. So I'm like, okay, we are now left with a few weeks. I'm supposed to have my passport. People at work started talking about the things they are buying, how they are preparing for that trip, and depressed. I could not even tell anyone that I'm sure I am going. Then I started getting confused. Then I started writing to, to the visa. Then I wrote to the visa center. And I told them I need my passport. I left my passport, but I need it back. Now, this week we have been fasting. This, this week we fasted as a, as a church, as a ministry. And uh, during that period when we were fasting as a ministry, there is a day when I shared. There, there is a day when, uh, when, I, when I led us in the morning prayer. And the scripture for that day was, do not be anxious. I, I prayed in that scripture. And for me, at that moment, it felt like I was just like people. But in actual sense, I was speaking to myself. God was speaking to me. Yes? And that day is the day I decided within my heart that I was not going to do what I decided to do. And there is this peace that came to me shortly after I got a response from the, the visa center. And they told me, oh, it's okay. You can just apply for this service for as soon as possible. And I did that. And there is this peace that then, then I'm like, okay, now that is settled. And then the, the day before, the day before, there is some other person also that I, I sent 
I, I tried sending money. The day before when I was in that state of confusion, I tried sending money to, and guess what? The money was sent to the wrong number. Two people. <laughs> to a wrong number. It was sent to And like after that, I remember talking to my brother, Isaac, and telling him, Isaac, I now believe and know that I am in a state of confusion. I know it. <laughs> I know it. The money was sent to a wrong number, and I had to start communicating with MTN Uganda, tell them to block the, the, the money from the account where it had gone, then also talk to Wild Remit, tell them to recall the transaction. Like, it was just a long process. But how did I get to this place? Disobedience. Disobedience got me to that place. Me deciding within my heart to do contrary to what God had told me to do put me in that state. Not the devil. I brought it on myself. How many of us have made decisions and thought someone is after you or There are things we do and we put ourselves in a state of no direction. No direction. You know, when I was in that state of anxiety, I could not sleep. I would wake up in the night. I would wake up every night. And at some point, I started convincing myself that, okay, the Holy Spirit is going to me to pray. So I would wake up. <laughs> I would wake up, but when I'm actually restless, restless. And then I make a very short prayer, and then I go back to sleep. And then I wake up the following day, and I am thinking about all my problems. But they were not really problems. They were not problems. Disobedience. So I don't know if there is anyone here I'm speaking to, but if God has told you something, God speaks. He speaks through his word. He can also speak to you directly. He can speak to you when you're praying. Those of you who have the gift of speaking in tongues, sometimes when you're speaking in those tongues, sometimes it's you speaking to God, and sometimes it's Him speaking to you directly, but in tongues. And and if you if you ask for the gift of interpretation, you will know. And there is a special authority that that word comes with when it's direct from Him and when it's not your spirit speaking to Him. It's a different kind of authority that you feel. God has been speaking to us. It could be that he has spoken to you through a dream or through someone. He can use anyone. Not, he can even use someone who is not a born again. God has spoken to me in so many ways through my husband. Like He can, he can speak to us through anyone, but when our eyes are attentive, rather when our ears are attentive, you pick it, even if it's not coming from, from the normal circles, or like even if it's coming from a direction you didn't expect it, if your ears are attentive and you pick it and know that that is a word for you that is coming from God, but what we do after receiving, Communication from God is very important. It's very, very important. I want to encourage someone. You could be depressed. You could be anxious. You could be going through a lot of things and you think there is no way out. I want you to do a spiritual check and ask yourself, what has God told you to do that you have not taken? 
what has God instructed you to do, but you have not paid attention. His word tells us, I will give you peace that surpasses anyone's understanding. When we are walking in obedience, we have a peace of mind. We get a peace of mind. It comes from God. Now, the thing is, The, the, the moment when the devil attacks us, he does not attack our spiritual needs. He, will, he can put some disobedience within you, and then because you're walking now in disobedience, the fruit of the spirit stops being seen in There is a scripture in Psalms, Psalms. Song, Songs, chapter 2, verse, verse 4. Song of Songs. Fourteen says, My dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places of the, on the mountainside, show me your face, let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet, and your face is fair. Then fifteen, Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards. Our vineyards that are in bloom. These foxes ruin the vineyards. Vineyards? Vineyards. Vineyards. They ruin the vineyards. When the enemy attacks us, you who used to have a lot of joy, you who was so loving, you start feeling this. Hard to love. It's so hard. You start feeling you 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 have to do it like like it's it's a lot of effort for you to love people. Hey, the hardest test is loving your enemies. You know that loving your enemies, loving your enemies. Hmm? Loving your enemies is so. Hard. Is so but when you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to love them. You loving them doesn't mean that you have to be patient with them. You can you can love someone that you love. You can love someone that you love. You can pray for a blessing upon someone who is tortured. that and it is by the spirit of God and his grace that you're able to do that not in our flesh if you have a boss who is tormenting you it's hard for you to pray for that boss it is hard for you to pray for a blessing upon that, that boss but it is by the spirit of God that you're able to do that and when you do that you get peace he stops being a burden to you. Your enemies stop being a burden to you. By the way, when, when we make enemies, when we, when we have so many enemies and we hold them in that category, this is my enemy, oh, I don't like this person, I don't like this person, you end up actually making them idols. And it's, yes? Yes, yes. They start controlling your decisions. They start controlling the way you act. Because 
this is your enemy when they do this you're like okay they also do this but you're now you're now you, you now have a small god yes exactly you now have a small remote control in your life <laughs> a big one have you ever lived with someone have you ever lived with someone this is but i'm just asking have you ever lived with someone okay let me give you an example a roommate and this roommate just annoys you this person does <laughs> or it could be someone renting and you just can't stand them you can't stand them but us being in that state us being in that state of ah i have this person stress me what it prevents us from breaking through it prevents us from moving forward You've heard of delays in breakthroughs? You there are times when you're sure that this is your season for you to achieve something and it doesn't happen. Why? Why? There might be something that you are doing that is causing you not to break through and you do not want to let it go. had a lot of stories to share but stop